Hello and welcome to this latest of the Business Spotlight interviews. Uh, I'm delighted today to be joined by Colin and Tina Dolson from 19 The Wine Bar in Kendall, Cumbria. Hi guys, how are you? Hello, Hello. we're good, thank Hi. you. Thanks for inviting us. No problem at all. Looking forward to, to hearing about your about your journey and obviously see you're located in, in your uh, newly opened expand, you know, um, you were telling me earlier on about the extension you just had built and uh, the uh, premises. So it'd be great to hear a bit about that, you know, and the reasons behind what, you know, the, ex the uh, expansion as, uh, as we go through. So if we can start with a little bit of background on, you know, yourself and the businesses or business that you've got, um, it'd be great to hear kind of how you've got to where you are today with yeah. that. Can I do that bit? And then, yeah. Yeah. So um, this is, so uh, Tina and I are obviously married and business partners. This is our third um, business venture together over 25, 26 years of being together. Uh, we had a restaurant um, uh, in Kendall, which we refurbished. Um, we both got a bit of a history in the, in the ability to do up buildings or manage and, and uh, renovate buildings. So we bought a, a restaurant near to the brewery arts called The Moon, and we did that up. Um, Ran it for a couple of years and sold the business and kept the building. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Then we've gone into um, uh, we've got a training and development business which is, is um, very simple, which we're co-owners of. Um, and then about five years ago, um, the opportunity here to to buy nineteen the wine bar um, and the building and the business. And then um, in the last, and we've ran that for since two thousand and nineteen. Um, and of course, very soon after, and talking of journey, the, very soon after uh, establishing the bar in early June 2019, we were hit by the dreaded COVID. Mm. Um, and so our journey has been through um, COVID, has been through um, credit crises and all, all sorts of things that are yeah. going on. Um, so I think one of the things I think we're proud of is that um, having managed businesses through some very, very turbulent times. Mm. Um, so that, uh, and the, the same for the training business is that 95% of our business disappeared overnight. Yeah. Uh, so, and, and then obviously with the wine bar, we were closed by the, by government dictate on the mm. 23rd of March, 2020. So it's been an, an interesting journey. Um, mm. And um, now, with the stage we're at now is that um, I run um, oversee, well, we both oversee both businesses, but I focus on Berison, mm -hmm. and Tim focuses on uh, being the MD of the wine bar. And we have an exceptional couple of uh, managers in either business that, that take most of the day-to-day -day operational getting it done stuff. Mm. So, oh. yeah, so that, that's, that's the basic journey. Mm. Uh, and we've had other training businesses that we've been in, involved in or part owners of, uh, but they're the three businesses we've set up to, uh, and managed together. Fantastic. Fantastic. So just expand on, so what, what did you do to navigate your way through the COVID, you know, to, to keep going? Obviously then you've got, you know, hospitality has been a challenge um, over the last well, I think years. once we finished crying. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ironically, um, the training business was hit much harder than yep. hospitality. Yeah. Um, as Colin said, it literally was like dominoes. Um, mm. A lot of our work is abroad for the training right. company. Um, we had a big project in um, Toulouse in France with right. Airbus. And it was literally, as I said, it was the domino effect. The diary just disappeared. Yeah. You know, we got this email that says force majeure, which is an act of God. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and yes, yeah, Colin said, you know, after we uh, picked ourselves up, because it actually hit us about a month before it hit the UK, um, yeah. it hit Europe before it hit the UK. Um, but I think we we are quite tenacious as a couple. Um, Good job. <laughs> we're very hands on. Um, yeah. So we hunkered down and, you know, we just did what we could to survive like everybody else really you know constantly mm. looking at our processes how we could evolve develop yeah. what we could and couldn't do um yeah I'm very fortunate that you know we we came through it and had survived it really um yeah, yeah. yeah. the first thing is really is the protection of both of the teams um because in the wine bar particularly it's very hard 
the, the, the thing that affects quality, customer service, the whole customer experience is, is not the fancy ambience. It's how they're greeted by the team. Yeah, of course. And the same in the training business, if your customers are, are, are dealt with really professionally and well by people. So what mm -hmm. the last thing we wanted to do was lose uh, the team, really. So we, we reinvested or kept, did all that we could to keep hold of uh, the staff teams, which has yeah. been successful. Um, we've got the same manager. Yeah, yeah, same manager for five years. Um, we were actually awarded the TripAdvisor Certificate of Excellence last year. Yeah. Wow. Um, which we're extremely proud of because yeah. I mean, it just came through the post. We had no idea. Right. Um, okay. Yeah. And uh, yeah, very, very proud of that. Um, mm. But I think that also we're very much part of the community. Mm. Uh, it's part of the, our passion um, mm. because we truly believe that, you know, the more businesses there are in an area, the more yeah. successful that area will be. So I'm part of Kendall Bid. I'm a director of Kendall Bid, of Kendall Futures mm -hmm. and of um, Barwatch. Um, so it's about supporting each other and the community as a whole mm. to help those businesses survive. And, and yeah. that was very much part of, you know, um, what we did through the pandemic was supporting mm. each other and, and other businesses. Fantastic. Fantastic. So, yeah. And, you know, getting the, the bit, so I, since when COVID, you know, the relaxed and, and things started kind of getting back to normal, you know, I've got the hospitality business myself. So it was quite a challenge, wasn't it? To, to, to reopen under those circumstances. So do you feel like you, you've become out of that stronger maybe than you, you would yeah. have done? Yeah, that. I think that we did. I mean, one thing that changed for us was 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 the table service. Yeah, um, because that was kind of enforced on us. Mm. Um, and um, we are we were fortunate that we did have a, an outside space as well. Mm. Um, but our customers said to us that actually they they really liked the table service. So that was yeah. something that, that you know we we have taken on board. We're quite fortunate in that you know we we have very high standards exceptionally mm. high standards um in fact the toilets were voted the safest toilets in kendall wow. um not that i've got a little bit of ocd or anything <laughs> like that but um so so it was quite easy for us to make some of the transitions mm. um yeah and we have a young man that has a, a ability to produce uh he has a printer um that the um so a 3D print. That's it. A 3D oh, okay. print. So he was able to produce all kinds of safety things for us that right. otherwise would cost a fortune. They were branded as well. So. so they were branded. So you know the hand sanitizers to stand right. by the door and um oh, okay. yeah. excellent. Yeah. So yeah. Brilliant. So what comes through is obviously you've got passion for for so it's hospitality, obviously you've got the training business, but it's hospitality is something you've always been keen on. <laughs> no, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 we like projects Fair enough. <laughs> um and um we like to walk our talk basically yeah, yeah. um Definitely. our training uh business is is very much based in reality um, mm. um we all appreciate that there's a very big distance between knowing and doing yeah. um, you can know something in your head but actually physically doing it is something yeah. quite different sure. um we are both executive coaches so getting our hands dirty is a way of helping us to yeah. learn and grow and develop. Um, yeah. You know, we're both over 60 and we're still learning. Yeah. So, and we apply all of those uh, techniques, the skills that we have into the business um, mm -hmm. to develop the teams around yeah. us. And I, I truly believe, I am extremely proud of what we've done here. And I truly believe a big part of that is the skill sets that we bring from our training business. Yeah, yeah. How okay. to motivate your team, how to manage um, and help the group manage themselves, help the, the individuals learn and grow. Mm. We do have, and it sounds very cliched, but we do have a test and learn uh, philosophy. Um, and we're constantly encouraging the staff to come forward with new ideas. Yeah. Um, you know, we went away on holiday and I have this thing about sheepskin rugs. I love sheepskin rugs. We've got yeah. rather a few. The customers really like them too. And we had a young duty manager, um, kind of assistant manager at the time. And I was trying to help him to 
kind of take you know his own authority mm. to use his initiative we yeah. went on holiday and he came back and he said Tina I've got something to tell you and I said okay let's sit down um I sold one of the sheepskins okay oh, <laughs> well the customer really really wanted the sheepskin right okay so how much did you sell it for well <laughs> okay perhaps we might not do that next time but wait right. you know the customer was the customer happy yes the customer was really happy yeah. um so we do genuinely encourage that kind of behavior for them yeah. to take ownership for them to be proud of what we've achieved here and yeah. they you know it's important that they feel that as well as we do and you'll know yeah. the philosophy into running any business is that it's very easy to focus on the the physical product would mm. be that pouring of a pint of beer or uh, or, or the making of something, sure. or, and then also easy to try and get the systems right, and which are all both important things. But fundamentally, underneath all that, it don't, none of it works unless the people delivering it uh, are committed. And so, as uh, you'll know from, from the work you do and that we do, is that um, if you don't spend enough time on the on the people, on the building of the team and the, the environment. Then uh, uh, systems get out of control. People don't adhere to them, mm. uh, um, and the product or the service uh, starts to decline because yeah. people lose heart. So um, it's a it sounds kind of very ethereal and you know um, touchy feely, touchy feely. Mm. But in reality, you, you look, look after the people because they're the people that are, we don't work in in the uh, in the bar business on no. behind the bar at all. And so it's working on the, the the team because they're the people that do. They're, they're, yeah, yeah. They're, they're customer facing. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. It's, you know, the kind of systems run the business, but the people run the systems. And and if great people, you know, the systems yeah. could be great, but unless you've got great people, and I think clearly what whenever we look to bring people in as well, it's about values rather than skill set. Sometimes as well, it's about do they do they buy into what you're trying to achieve as a as a yeah. business, as a company, as a yeah, you know, as you as business owners, do they all align? Because if their values align, you can train the skill, you can't train the behaviour or anything. Else. No, um, and and you know, a big part of what I was doing within the other training business before I moved into this position mm. was we had a big contract in in the Middle East, and I right. was doing a lot of culture change right. programs. Um, and so we've done a lot of work about what is culture within our business mm. to enable people to model the behaviors yeah. um, is, 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 is not an easy thing to do. Um, mm. But we are around within the business and we model those behaviors mm. so they know what those behaviors look like. Yeah, yeah. So through the pandemic, we did an awful lot of role play so for example the young man that I mentioned about having the 3d printer um he came to us um with no experience he'd done a, a master's degree in cyber security so he was very much the IT profile mm. and he wanted to learn to interact more to be more sociable so we mm. would do a lot of role play um with him to help him to do that what does good look like if mm. you are demonstrating a particular behavior what does that actually mean yeah. so if we want you to um kind of you know demonstrate the culture within this business what does that look like and what yeah. does that mean to you as the individual rather than a word mm. on you know oh, our our values are x y and z mm. uh, honesty yeah. and integrity and openness well what does openness mean yeah. what does that actually look like within yeah. business context and within you as an individual mm. because obviously Stephen is an IT person and he will never be the gregarious front yeah. of business but he brought so many other skills yeah. um, so so that was you know something that we did work on in the pandemic quite a lot and a, and a section of the uh, of, of our customer base did fall in love with him. So that, yeah, no, that, 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 <laughs> when, he was very popular with the, the, the young yeah. lady. Yeah, but, very attractive young man. No, but there was also <laughs> some of the older ladies, right? Like, well, oh, they all yes, they did. They, they did. It, it was, you know, there's always a, a play for somebody. But I go back to your point. It's particularly mm. about attitude. Is that if there's a willingness to learn, a willingness to to um, take feedback if you get if it's not, which is part of learning. Yeah, uh, but I think this industry suffers from low expectation mm. i think most people don't see hospitality as something which is 
long-term mm. uh, professional career, which is very sad because um, most people, customers view is it's about pouring a drink. Mm. Uh, it, as you'll know, it is very complicated. You try yeah. get around all the products, all the cocktails, all the things, working the till system, managing the cellar, um, yeah. managing the ambers of the place, doing the systems, uh, everything. There's, there is a whole heap of, you know, even compliance uh, yeah. around kitchens we've got two commercial kitchens here and and yeah. it, getting made sure that getting hygiene and compliance right it, they are you know it's a, it's a complex um yes. but to the public it just seems like all they see is a drink or a meal being served yeah, yeah absolutely no absolutely yeah yeah it's yeah the amount of yeah so it's almost a full-time job but they, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's uh yeah no it's the the, the amount of process and systems and, and things you need to have been done on a daily basis, you know, from a legal checkpoint, you know, compliance, et cetera, is, is, yeah, it's, unless you've got the systems in place to make that, you know, and leverage people's time as much as you can, then, it, yeah, it, that's when it can fall down quite, quite spectacularly if people aren't, you know, organised and processed. Um, and there's a lot of discipline that goes into it as well to, to make sure that you achieve the kind of results that you're looking for. So, um, so I guess looking forward, what, what, you know, for, for the bar, what, what the, what does the future look like and what do you see as the main challenges for you? Costs. Yep. Yeah, the big um, challenge in the last couple yeah, of years. I, yeah. Um, I think that, you know, as a small business, mm. we have to manage our costs every mm -hmm. single minute of every single day. Yep. Um, Kendall is very price sensitive. It is right. not the Lake District. Mm. You know, as you usually describe it, that, you know, people that are going on holiday have deeper pockets because they're there to have a nice time. Yeah. Kendall is a living sort of town, working, working town, yeah. mm -hmm. and it is price sensitive. So, you know, our costs are constantly, constantly going up at the moment. Our mm. staff costs are going up, um, mm. yet price expectation mm. um is expected to say, stay the same. Yeah. Uh, we're trying to manage that and make sure that our customers understand why we make an increase when we make an increase. So, yeah. for example, we do have a, a regular customer base. Mm. And um, we have a group of gentlemen that come and they like their casks and um, we had to put them up. And yeah. you know, they weren't particularly happy about that. So Carl, our manager, literally took, you know, um, part of our uh, procedures and yeah. said to him, okay, let's look at what we're making here on this product that we're, we're making a loss. Yeah. <laughs> the reason we can make a loss is because we sell these cocktails at this price. Yeah, yeah. It's the only way that we can allow you to buy that product at that price. Yeah, yeah not constantly keep making a loss at this no. and they accepted the uplift on the price um so it is about you know communicating to your customers um mm. in relation to you know why those costs are increasing but it's very tough i think people do feel so that the future i think is to is to really work hard at maintaining <clears throat> the feel of the place not just in the physical feel of the place but what it feels like to walk in because that's the biggest driver for people wanting to return yeah, to work sure. physical environment work hard on the team such that because there's no better way forward as a business than repeat business so yeah. we're on, on especially on our weekends to have people who regularly go we want to go to that place because yeah. we feel there we associate it with good times good people um, nice product belonging uh, and, and a sense of belonging which is why we think the community thing is re really important one we enjoy being part of the community sure. but what we've found with, with the training consulting businesses we don't know anybody locally from those uh, it's only when we started running hospitality businesses that suddenly we knew a whole uh, our personal yeah. network of people we knew locally it just exploded yeah. great to feel part of the community ourselves yeah, so yeah. going forward i think it's really working hard to um lay on different events use the space as efficiently as possible but keep yeah. the ambient high service levels really high yeah. uh, so it's going to manage the cost and, and the price as, as much as we can um, yeah kind of two things stick out so one is the, the so you're kind of looking at the value proposition so you know yeah. 
cost isn't price is price, but value is, is is value, right? You can create a lot of value in exactly the kind of things you're talking about and people. And that comes from the experience, especially, I guess, in the hospitality sector. Yeah. Um, and interestingly, something I think that, you know, any business, and it's great to hear you guys, and not surprisingly, but understanding margins on products, not yeah. my margin overall is X. It's no. understanding the detail behind that and any business yeah. can learn from that in terms of you might be, you know, you might be an electrical wholesaler or electrical engineer, but you're doing five or six different types of jobs and it's understanding the margins on each one because you could be making a loss on one and making a lot, you know, so suddenly you kind of think, well, what do I yeah. want to be focusing Absolutely. my energy behind and stuff like that? So it's understanding that. Absolutely. Really when you use running business that's got consulting um, mm. fees, the margins aren't tight at all. Um, yeah. It has its other issues, but when you come into a retail business, yeah, yeah. You know, um, and, and margins are, or, um, across the board are imp are important to, to yeah, general yeah. absolutely without without destroying the product service or quality you know yeah, that's, yeah. that's the key element of it exactly. um, to, to to maintain those things as being really high yeah, yeah. and even down to you know we, we could be working a bar uh or carl would work a bar and um though across um six or seven pumps on the on the main bar there would be less than a a liter of wastage right. uh, across those because of teaching the staff how to pour a pint, uh, putting the cast on at the right time and, and right temperature. All of that management means that you're cutting your waste down exponentially. Great yeah. systems. So it's um, so yeah, having all of that in place. But we do have a great manager who, who's, who's yeah, very but, yeah. But the systems have to be. I say the systems have to be there for the because if you didn't have the system, the manager could be fantastic. But if he hasn't got a system. To yeah, utilize yeah. and ensure manage and, and ensure he's being used, then yeah. he won't be getting that kind of wastage without that system as well. Do you know what I mean? So yes. no, it's, it's a uh, real balance between the <clears throat> the culture of the business, the systems and procedures, and yeah. the overall product or service, such that you know, and it's a constant balance, constantly yeah, constant, yeah. evaluating that. And then um, yeah. we have people in the summertime that have, or in the tourist times when people are staying in Airbnbs locally, mm. they're coming for a pint of beer and laugh at the how low the cost is you come up from london and well yeah that's when yeah, you, you used to pay, Wednesday, I suppose, isn't it yeah i know yeah, yeah. Well, it is, yeah. and you so, kind of like say you're not in that lake district honeypot kind of you're kind of on the edge and yeah like you say but then you see the balance between you know the, the value you do give you know in that way as well so but you know, what you can't do, what's interesting, you go into the tourist areas, they can get away with bad service because it's not yeah. the same returning people all the time. No, you're not. The, the repeat business, yeah, for your business, it's, yeah, repeat is absolutely vital. You get, you get such a bad name. It's a local, there's a networking yeah. town that if you get a bad name if you start yeah. producing bad service or doing yeah. something good and your, your customer would disappear. Yeah, yeah, and it's, and it's, yeah, and it's almost that intangible that you don't see you only start seeing that when you know over a period of time your business is declining and you're not really understanding why and it's you know yes. it's the customers are voting with their feet at the end of the day aren't they just going somewhere else they're not going to tell you the yeah. old adage of you know how many you know how many bad customers you know customer reviews how many do you actually hear out of how many bad you know but how many people do they tell you know all that kind of stuff that you don't see what you're paying, what you're paying for in these things is not you're not paying just for the drink. <laughs> no, no, no. You're paying for or, or the food. You're paying yeah. for the place to be. And yeah, exactly, yeah. Tina alluded earlier about safety. Uh, you know, there's hygiene safety, but also people want to come to a place where they feel safe um, and secure. Things aren't going to kick off. Whatever, yeah. if there is some bad behaviour, it gets managed very quickly. Yeah. Um, so all of those things are really part of somebody going, I go there because that's part of the value proposition. I can guarantee I'm going to feel safe. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm going to feel great about it. Perfect. Yeah, no, absolutely. No, some great thoughts, some great thoughts. So within your business journey on, you know, with the different businesses that you've owned, what, what would you say would be, you know, maybe one or two of your biggest learnings in regards to being business owners? <laughs> don't do it <laughs> no, I didn't mean that I didn't mean no, that, didn't no, mean that. No. <laughs> there, there are times when you do you know it, it, it is, I always say because we do in, in the coaching work you know, if, mm. if you set out with an expectation that there's there's such a thing as an easy pound mm. um, 
then you're going to stress yourself out and that is to have a have a passion for what you want to do yeah have an ownership for it and then you'll have the right because business takes energy yeah it, and if you don't believe in what you're doing you won't have the energy to do it yeah um, and you won't you'll find it difficult to get through the hard times which are inevitable yeah. so I think there are um so you know having a realistic expectation about what you want to achieve mm -hmm. and we, we set off when we had the first restaurant i particularly had all sorts of ideas oh we could do this we could do that we could have yeah. somebody some papers we could do this and we do that no no there's, there's a reality to what you can do and what and in, in many ways, the customers will tell you what you can do with your business. Yeah. And you can, most small businesses can't afford the upfront market research. Yeah. You're not a weather spoons, you're not, you're not a larger chain. So largely you set something up with a bit of a vision and then yeah. see how people interact with it and yeah. change accordingly. I think that's, that's for me, that's key is adaptability yeah. um, and being able to move quickly and being yeah. that swift of foot because you know larger businesses can't do that um and i no. think that we've learned to do here with the help of our uh manager mm. is, is to adapt and learn you yep. know and, and i think that one of the things that we use in the training business and, and i think is, is very relevant here is that if you don't know where you're going you'll end up somewhere else and i think that for us we have a clear vision yeah uh, and you know we do know what we want we know where we want the business to go yeah. but being i guess um humble enough <laughs> to allow our team our manager our customers to to tell us actually maybe we need to adapt and change and yeah. then being able to do that very quickly yeah and, yeah. and nice. yeah yeah, yeah. So yeah, now I think yeah, you know, start with the end in mind, as they say. You know, yeah. you, you, unless, Sorry, if, if you don't, if you don't have a clear vision, like you say, you, you just end up. It's like the old sat nav. You get in your car and you don't know where you're going. You, you don't put it in the sat nav of the car. Just take it wherever, yeah. wherever it ends up. That's where that's where you'll end up. So um, yeah. and it won't be a smooth journey, but you know, if you know where you want to aim and what yeah. you're looking to achieve, and, and you've got to be um, able to shift that. You've got to be able to shift that slightly in, in terms yeah, yeah, of yeah, yeah, so. And, and then, just, I, I think. You know, one of, we're probably giving away my age, but one of the things that I ha I had very clear in my head was the TV series Cheers, where right. everybody knows. Oh, them. okay, nice. And that was something that that sense of community, that sense mm. of belonging, yeah, was something yeah, yeah. that I wanted to bring to our place. Fantastic. Was somewhere where people, as we've said before, you know, where you feel welcome, you feel mm. part of something that that you know you. you you're part of the establishment and everybody yeah. knows your name. Fantastic. And we've got that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we get and, yeah. and we get feedback. People who are coming in over the weekend with this place, one of its first few weekends open, the the response was just amazing, you know, and people's yeah. comments was a aghast and um and, and coming to see it, but and not just the physical ambience, but the rest of it really. And yeah. um, so the and we have supported when we were doing the place up and Tina spent, you know, five months in dungarees and a paintbrush and you know, getting everything sorted. And um, then the manager used to be giving tours around the building site with, with right. local customers. And then it, it was a bit of a journey mm. towards doing this place up and yeah. it involved the current customers who felt part of it, you know, so it was, it was lots of humor mm. and banter with them going on, you know, and they could mm. see, they could see Tina sanding floors, painting walls, doing whatever, you know, painting chairs. Yeah. Number six. six chairs I painted. <laughs> Why I thought that was a good idea, I've got no idea, but there you go. That's some of the learning. Well, worth, it, worth it in the end. Worth it in the end. And also the other point I was going to make, which I again thought was really interesting, is the point about adaptability, pivoting, you know, taking on board feedback. Because, you know, again, if you start your own business, sometimes... I, you, can, you kind of tend to hear one of two things. Well, I've always, you know, why are you doing it that? Why are you doing that? Well, I've always done it that way, or I've always done it this way, or you know, and and then because it's the ego gets in the way of the right decision of kind of well, that's not what my vision was, so therefore we're not going to, you know. Whereas, like you say, in the businesses that you know, the, especially the hospitality business, you get such direct feedback from your customers. Absolutely. It's you know, yeah. being being able to say, okay, maybe I wasn't quite right that way. Let's look at this and. And then go down, you know, let's test a different way of doing it. Let's look, you know, and as you said earlier on, 
including the people that are dealing with the customers day to day, you know, they're, they're the people that know the answers. It's like, and, you know, we, uh, you, we use a saying that said, you, you are not your customer. So you might have an idea in your head that you think is a good idea. Yeah. And that you would personally buy if you went to somewhere. Exactly. <clears throat> but you, and you can get as <clears throat> enthusiastic as you like about that. Yeah. But if it doesn't go down with the with the actual customer, exactly. you're wasting your time. You know? yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's a bit like the old Dragon's Den. You watch Dragon's Den sometimes, yeah. and someone yeah, will come yeah. in with an idea they think is the best idea ever because it suits them perfectly, and they're like, "Yeah, that's that's not great. It's all right, but it's you know, commercially, it's just not a commercial. Yeah. It's not a commercial option. You can't so, scale yeah. it. And many people there come in with what I would call maybe a good product idea, but it's not mm. a business. It's a big no, difference exactly, yeah. in a product or an idea and yeah, scaling yeah. that into a business, let alone scaling the business up. Yeah, you know, yeah. To a point, you've got to have, you know, uh, you know, well, as I said earlier, we know we, we, we can't compete with the likes of the big um, national chains no. um, in terms of setting up a business, their processes and, um, you know, market research and all that. We, we can't compete with that, but we can compete. Yeah. The quality uh, of a service and something yeah. where people experience something very different and very personal. Yeah. So when you hear people complain about being an another Costa Coffee come to town, yeah, and it's yeah. going to destroy our business. No, it won't. Only if you let it. There's plenty of options to mm. to uh, to do something very different. So go on yeah. and sit in one of those chains and get a feel for what it's not like, and then yeah, compete that way. Yeah, no, absolutely. No, no, no. Yeah, very, very true. Very true. Um, so last couple well, last question really was that and uh, issue with your background in training and stuff as well, but what um what or who um inspires you or is inspiring you currently? You. No. <laughs> no. Well it is interesting that we part of the thing we haven't mentioned is that uh we've we've been married what 25 years coming up but um been together for 26 27 and i think that it, you know business is tough and if you've not got a supportive partner either that you're in business with or that is a partner on the side just sure. either it counts it is that you do need need understanding um support sometimes counseling <laughs> yeah so you do need a strong relationship uh with, with your family and that sort of thing yeah yeah uh, so I, I think that um, that that's a, a key element, would you? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, yeah. But I, I go. On. No, I'm just thinking that you know we are very fortunate that we have a set of skills from mm. the training business, and as I said before, you know we 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 like to believe that we practice what we preach. Yeah. I'm not saying we're perfect by any mm. you know means, but. We do try to practice what we preach and we use that set of skills and we're always open with each other mm -hmm. and we can challenge each mm -hmm. other. Um, and I think fundamentally that is what has got us through the last, you know, the last uh, few years with the pandemic, with the recession. You know, we were hit very heavy with the recession in 2008 with the training business, yeah. um, you know, and yeah, a, a strong relationship um between the two of us i think is a, a key part of yeah, yeah. you know what got us through that ability to be able to download and yeah. you know i know people say don't take your work home but that doesn't work for us we're a couple that work together yeah, yeah. we work very well together yeah. um and the skills that we have have enabled us to work through some shit basically yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah no, absolutely i mean that's why you know people that don't have don't have that, you know, do struggle, you know, talk to business owners that don't have that support for whatever reason. Um, yes. And, you know, I guess you guys probably seen the same in your other business, you know, where we work with business owners and sometimes it's just that, just that option to, to vent when it's going badly, you know, when things aren't going great, you know, it's just someone yeah. to, to kind of download some stuff off to, it just makes a massive difference. And obviously if people Absolutely. are in the same, yeah, if, you, if you're dealing with the same stuff as well, it makes a, you know, a big, a, a big difference in terms of being able to get through the tougher times and celebrating the, the great times when they come as well. So yeah, if, fantastic. If, if somebody were saying to me, well, you know, in terms of when we're setting up a new business, some of the pieces of advice that I might offer, one of those is just yeah. make sure that your family and relationships are strong and supportive of what you're doing. Yeah. 
yeah, yeah. not involved in the business they understand the challenges that, that yeah. brings yeah, yeah. Um, if you go into it uh, and you're blind to that then it will stress your own personal relationships and family out uh, and that in turn could have a detrimental effect to both yeah. the business and most importantly to your family relationship so you know really making sure that you've got your your eyes open with what you're going into it breaks my heart watching people set up a, a shop or retail in town with all gusto and real belief that what they've got is what other people want mm. and then sit there passively and, and nothing happens so they don't yeah. succeed no and so uh you can see their dreams kind of melting away rather than um, having some knowledge about how to turn that dream into a reality yeah yeah, yeah. Indeed, indeed, yeah. Again, you know, we, we're working alignment of, of people's dreams and stuff. You know, if 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 everyone's bought into the vision, then you know, when the tough times do come, even if, like I say, even if they're not in the business themselves, if they can understand what the longer term vision is, it makes you feels like you can support someone through yes. the tougher times. So you know, absolutely, wouldn't wouldn't uh, you know, wouldn't disagree at all on that point. So great stuff. Well, thank you so much for your time. Um, just finally. You know, people want to find out more about 19 the wire bar where you are what we you know what 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 would your the socials and stuff like that where can they find out more yeah it's uh, our website which is obviously um, www19 the wine bar or 19 the wine bar on facebook and instagram yeah it's dot co dot Oh yeah, .co.uk. Forgot that bit. Forgot that bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we'll it. Brilliant. All right. Well, listen. Thank you so much, Colin and Tina. Uh, it's been great to chat to you. And uh, yeah, good luck with the, the you know the, with the wine bar. Um, and I'm I'm sure I'll pop up at some point and say hello. Oh, Lovely. I do. Yeah. Look good forward to, to it. Great Take stuff. Care, thank thank you. you. Cheers. Bye bye. Bye. Bye.